This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show, we are back. Not a comfortable situation for me this cast at all, bro. What is going on, bro? I, if I, can I say what I just heard? Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I, I told, <laughs> I came on, and uh, uh, Pete's like, "You're gonna have to drive the show today. I got a situ, I, I got a situation over here," and I hear Jackie from upstairs say, "Eat shit, Pete." I do have to say, she did say, "Guy, eat shit." <laughs> <laughs> guy, oh yeah, guy, eat shit. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> All right. As you know, last week I did it from a temporary location upstairs with the blue thing. It, I looked like an idiot. The mic was coming out of my face, and it was temporary. I couldn't wait to get back in my studio. The, the room right outside here is where they're doing renos. The guys are almost done. They're not here today. But before they can do the last phase, Jackie has to paint all the baseboard and stuff. So she's like, like the door is right here, bro. She's right outside the door. Hi. <laughs> she's <laughs> Bro, before the cast. You, you know, I mean. She, so, so she's right outside, and I'm asking you right now. Yeah. With your, your with your wife right outside the door. Can we continue this cast? Bro, that's what. I'm, look at. And, 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 yeah. And why is it? Why is this an issue? What's going on? Like, why is she so angry? Well, she's angry because right before the cast started, she's out. She's not really angry, but she's mad that she has to do this job. She doesn't like to do it. And she's been doing it two days. And then I had the audacity because she's trying to do it in between her daughter coming home from school and having to take care of her daughter and run her daughter around tonight to swimming and karate. So she's trying to bang it out when she can. And I, she didn't even use these words. I did. I had the audacity right before we started the cast. I sat down. I even, I even brought... This draft thing that you put on the windows to keep the draft down. You ever see these? I put it on the yeah. bottom of the door for sound. Because uh, I know I know she's going to hear this later. Everybody does. But in the moment, I don't like anyone to hear it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, yeah. so I had the audacity to say to her, can you hear me out here? Can you hear me right now? And she goes, of course I can hear you. I'm right here on the other side of the door. And I go, you going to stay there while I do the cast? And she's like... <laughs> Yeah, Pete, I have to finish it. And she's literally on her hands and knees. And I'm like, I really don't want you out there when I'm casting. And then I was like, the nerve of me. What does it matter? Everyone hears it anyway. I go, but not in the moment. In the moment, it's a private situation. <laughs> <laughs> I almost want to tell you to tell Lana to give her a call and keep her on the phone for 45 minutes. <laughs> We so can cast, is, yeah. Uh, we can cast. No, no, no. Yeah, we can cast absolutely, but it is a weird vibe when you got someone listening in. Oh my God, bro! What the fuck is a full blown construction site? That's what I'm what? That's... Oh, oh my God! Oh my God! There's no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you oh, caught her on the ladder, guys. She's on the ladder. <laughs> I love you, you Jack. <sighs> you almost want to tell her, yeah, yeah, to put some headphones on or something. I, I told, I told her that. I'll say, Jack, can, why couldn't you put headphones on though? The what? She feels like uh, she gets. She said, "I'm interested in seeing how it plays out." I get first dibs on the show. Yeah, but she don't even know what the hell I'm saying. Yeah, I feel like this is a Yoko Ono moment. You know, you can't come in and sit in with Lennon when they're trying to make the album. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it don't work that way. You can hear it later. <laughs> right, yeah. If Lana, if Lana came in right now and just said, uh, oh, I'm going to, I feel like trying to do a sketch and do some drawing while you're down here and listen, do you mind? I said, you, you need to leave the room. There's, there's no way I could do this 
there's no way we could do this with anybody else in the room. I, there's podcasts out there. They got it. It, it looks like a party yeah. in the in the podcast studio. They got four or five guys. There's you know there's, there's a dog in the room. I I bro, I gotta do this alone. Focused. It's it's like flying a jet. You know, if we were if we were pilots flying at fourteens or whatever, you, you wives want to go? Can we sit in the back and come with you to France? What the f- no, this is total. Con- we're doing Mach five right now, bro. I got to whisper. I'm whispering the whole show. I'm whispering. <laughs> DJ Hank, raise my volume right now. <laughs> I'm too loud anyway. I'm too loud anyway, bro. Uh, All right. Let's get into it, man. I got to tell you something that happened yesterday, and uh, I don't think this has ever been done ever before. Now, (laughs) did I tell you about the, the soccer practice with the masks? Did we go over this on the podcast? I don't think he, I don't think mass specifically, no. So last week, talking to parents at soccer. Yeah. And one of the parents said, uh, this is ridiculous. Why do they got masks on? Yeah. Now we're outside, right? Yeah. And I go, yeah, what? why do they got masks? I said, is this a mandate from the soccer school that they got to wear masks? I don't think so. So I have to practice. I call over the coach. I said, Coach, is this a mandate from the school to wear the masks? No. She goes, I just thought, you know, you guys, the parents wanted it. <laughs> said, we don't, we don't want it. I came back to the group and I said, guys, listen up. Next week, no masks. They're like, really? I said, yeah. I just found out it's not even a mandate. They're like, oh, thank you. This and that. So I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking to myself, and I and, and and I fall into this. People are like sheep, right? No one questions nothing. Yeah. So if you see the mask, you just automatically think, "Oh, this is the way it's supposed to be," right? Yeah. Bro, I felt like Paul Revere. I just was a patriot yeah. in that moment, right? You're selling yourself short. That was a Patton moment right there. <laughs> Paul Revere delivered the news. Guy, you were the news. <laughs> you shut it down. I, I'm proud of you. I want to be that guy. I haven't had that ability. Everywhere I go, it's a legal thing. But, I mean, you literally found the spot. What? No. Shut. Then to go back. The only thing that would bother me in that moment is if I was my summers on that soccer team and I'm sitting there with my boy and he's masked up and you come over and, and say what you just did, my, my boy will be like, I, I want that guy to be my dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a hero moment that is, man. You almost should have pulled all the dads aside and let them tell their kids individually. I mean, you just came over with the fucking cape flowing like Superman. <laughs> Masks are off. <laughs> <laughs> and you're famous on top of it. Oh, what is the fucking I did that? <laughs> uh, so, so I laid down the law there. Yeah. I, so, so on the way home, I'm telling Lana, I go, <sighs> now. I'm not Mr. Warm and Fuzzy when it comes to meeting new people. I never was. Even in school, I was always kind of like a loner. And, you know, I went to to lunchtime. If I didn't know anybody at lunch, I didn't sit with anybody. I sat alone, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I told Lon, I go, this is what I'm doing next week. I'm bringing a cheese and meat board for the parents Right while while we watch our kids play, I'm bringing a charcuterie board, and on top of that, I'm bringing wine. Wow! Right that, now, yeah, 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 that's nice. Now, now this is yesterday, right? Yeah. I, and I told Lana, I said, "Let me handle this. I'm going to do it how I know it, how it should be done." In my head. What was going to happen, because I was there a little early. 
I didn't want to don the cheese board and the meat tray and the wine and then have people show up and see that there. I wanted the crowd to get there yeah. first, settle in. Yeah. Then out of nowhere, I wanted a boom. Yeah. Look at that. Okay. Lana goes, there's about half of the parents there. She goes, uh, Sebastian brought um, cheese and meat. I go, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, she's treating it like a bag of oranges at halftime for the kids. You know, this is, yeah. this is the whole thing, <laughs> man. It's a semi surprise, honey. Right? <laughs> oh, man. yeah. He, you don't you don't announce that. You see that. You don't announce it. You see it. Yeah. Sort so of like what, what what I get you. I get you. That's I go I called her over. I go, I told you let me handle it. She's like, so what? I said I said that yeah. I go, no, no, no. It defeats the whole purpose of the you know, when you see that, when you see that and it's a soccer practice, and there's two and a half year olds, and I said, your brain can't even comprehend what's going on, right? Right. If a right. parent goes, wait, 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 what is cheese? They're sitting there going, what? And then all of a sudden, I go, glass of wine, and they go, am I in Tuscany? Right. That, that's that's what <laughs> that's I'm it. looking for. That's it, that's it man. I, she turned it into, here comes the cheese plate, instead of, what's that? A cheese plate? <laughs> I'm right there with you, man. It's these little nuances. And now they're sitting there, now they're sitting there wondering, why isn't he bringing the cheese plate? When's it coming out? Who's he waiting for? <laughs> We're not good yeah. enough? I mean, there's already five of us here. Let's see the cheese plate. Oh, it became a Yeah. Thing. Oh, my God. Uh, oh, my God. So, anyway, I was forced to debut the damn thing earlier than I wanted to. Okay, so I'm getting the cheese plate out. She comes over. She, are, are you, she goes, "Are you mad?" I go, "Yeah, I'm mad." <laughs> it went from a presentation to go get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, man! So I I bring it out, and then and. And I got to get your take here, but I thought this was the best option. For Christmas, I got like 10 different wine in a box. Have you ever heard of this? I have, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's a box of wine, and it's got like, you know, uh, a nozzle, and that's where it comes out of. I thought that would be a better option for... A soccer field, you know, not, not bringing out glutely, bro. I mean, smart thinking. Smart thinking is what uh, that was. Okay. Not my typical way of doing things, but I figured for the environment, this wine would be suitable uh, for what where we were. Now, Man, I, I, I just got to say, I give you a hard time about being antisocial, but... I would, I mean, I would never do this because now you're going to have to talk to them while you drink it and eat it. And Oh, wow. What a, what a commitment. I'm getting uncomfortable hearing this, but continue. Really impressed. Well, <laughs> well this is my way of being warm and fuzzy to people. I get warm and fuzzy when I make other people feel warm and fuzzy, right? That's, that's the way I, I I connect through food and beverage. That's the way I connect with people. Right. Now, if you would have took a picture, if you would have took a picture last week of the of the, the, the parents sitting on the sideline and a picture of what I saw yesterday with the parents sitting on the sideline, last week everybody was separate, lined up along the fence, sitting down, kind of talking or whatever, or just watching. This week everybody was in a little half kumbaya circle Dude. around <laughs> last week the kids have masked everyone's apart now you got this scene going it's almost as if during the week the taliban got driven out <laughs> you know, you know what I'm <laughs> unbelievable i mean you you just you are just a big ball of freedom guy that's what you are <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Holy shit, they're probably licking their chops wondering what you're going to do for the next practice. I'm going to come down with Bon Jovi from a helicopter. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. You bring up a good point. I might just bring an a cappella singer oh, next week man. to just strum on a guitar and knock out some tunes. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to just send Lana with Caruso, even if you're in town, just to let them understand there are going to be times I won't be here. And I don't want that. <laughs> I want you to get used to that, too. I don't want you to be devastated when I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> so and for the wine, what I used was these black kind of coffee cups almost because obviously I didn't want to bring glass or anything that was uh, see-through just in case the park ranger came by yeah, and right. said, what, what, are you, what are you doing? <laughs> right, right. Oh, open alcohol in public with kids playing soccer? Oh, yeah. Right? You don't want to get into permit territory, right? <laughs> <laughs> so... so Everything was kind of on the DL, and what I love most is everybody was talking. The guy came up, and this is what I loved. He goes, may I have another glass of wine? Hey, I go, absolutely. I took my oh, box out. Yeah, yeah. I gave him the wine. You know what I was upset about? Why? That he had to get up and ask that I wasn't monitoring his intake because because normally what i do <laughs> right if you're if you're glad your glass is running low i, I come by like i go by and top it off i know but let's not lose, lose the overall big picture here we all supposed to be eyeballing caruso playing right <laughs> <laughs> i mean after the game, Lana's going to go, how did it go? Caruso's going to start the answer. You're going to go, not bad. Tony had two glasses. <laughs> the, the salami went faster than I imagined. <laughs> By the way, with the okay. charcuterie, I just have to add, e even if I was a dad and I didn't want to, like, take whatever you were offering because then I have to be social if I was that kind of person, I, I, you can't say no to some of those meats. I, I, I'd be like... Uh I got to go over. I got to go over and get a pinch of that brzeut. And then we're talking. Okay. So now the kids, it's a 45-minute practice. The kids get like three little water breaks in between. Uh -huh. When the kids come off the field, they're fucking eating mortadella. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it, it's like, it, you know how you normally have like or, orange slices yeah, or grapes. Yeah, you get you orange slices, and then you hope they give you a can of soda at the end of the game. Holy shit, they're eating what's the <laughs> They're coming back into the game with stuffed peppers. <laughs> stuffed peppers. So everybody's having a ball, bro. Word got out amongst the other people in the soccer practice. <laughs> They started circling like buzzards, bro. <laughs> I felt like I was running a deli. <laughs> oh, oh, my God, man. Mm. That is fantastic. By the way, so, do, you, do you just, before I forget, like, when your dad grew up in Sicily, right? Like, does anything like that come up? Like, what did they eat to snack on? Oranges, too? Or were, were they, like, certain fruits specific to the island that we don't even know of that they ate during the practice <laughs> they were eating dirt bro there was no no one was bringing no one was bringing fruit no my, my 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 dad's parents didn't even know he was playing soccer he had to sneak it because they were afraid he was getting hurt so he had to go off and sneak playing soccer and then come back and act like nothing happened wow uh, wow different time but this at the end of this practice, and this is this is what I don't want. I didn't want this to happen. The guy goes, "All right, I'm bringing something next week." Uh, now, I, no, 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 guy, guy, mm -hmm. this is mine. Yeah. I do this, right? right? It, I ain't doing this so like the 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 parent next week is gonna bring that. No, 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 no. I handle. The catering. <laughs> 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 
That's it. And and you also you don't do it every time, right? You're not gonna well, like here. you're not gonna you weren't planning on doing this every single time you go, right? Not every single time, but like next week I had in my head a beautiful fruit platter, right? Yeah. Just some beautiful strawberry, pineapple, cut watermelon, right? Right. Nice. And another box of the wine. Bro, I, I tell you, the wine was a huge hit. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, parents, this is this is a 430 practice, so they've been dealing with this shit all day long. They're working. They got to get the kid in the car, dress them up, his sock. They yeah. come to the yeah. practice with the look of angst. The next thing you know, pow, pow, oh, yeah. Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> <laughs> I got oh. mixed emotions about this, though, dude. I, I, I feel... The one-time shot was just beautiful to, like, get everybody to, to kind of know each other. And down the line, do it here and there. You do it every time. Number one, like you said, well, first of all, now other people want to do it. So now people are going, oh, now we're going to have to do this, which is not what you meant. But number two, um, what if what, what happens with, like, um, first of all, this isn't competitive yet, right? No. I, all right. No. I, I, you, you, I, I don't want to make it weird for Caruso. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to make it be about like uh, he's the slowest kid on the team, but they put him at right wing because his dad's bringing an unbelievable spread. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a little young for that, but I know you. By the time he's in sixth grade, you're going to be doing steak. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be bringing a grill. To the, to the... You're going to be, you can't even say hi to your boy because you're fucking churning a roasted pig. <laughs> you got there the night before the game to start the pig. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, bro, why, when are you going to oh. open up your own restaurant on Mulholland Drive and just, you know, just do it, man. When, you know, you bop in, you bop out, but it's everyone knows it's run the way you want it oh man love bro, i'm team. telling you I, I i love this bro, i could single-handedly this is this is this is my my objective i could single-handedly increase in attendance at this soccer practice right by about tenfold once the word gets out yeah because kids <laughs> go dads are gonna call they're gonna switch teams there's gonna be no one for you in league to play because your team has 72 kids on it <laughs> 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 because cause Lana and I are one of the I think we're the only parents that come as a couple yeah. it's either the mom or the dad with the other kids mm -hmm. we're the only parents that are there for as a couple so here's my thing I'm thinking these parents the wife is going to get in the car buckle the kid and start driving home she's going to call her husband and go huh babe that guy brought cheese and cheese and wine to the practice, and he's gonna go. What? He goes. Yeah, it's beautiful cheese, nice, uh, nice meat, some stuffed peppers. He had a beautiful, I had a pesto dip there with crackers for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> so man, so <clears throat> I, I, I want to get couples to come to this almost as a date night on the sideline dad no that's that's a great idea that's a great idea man you're gonna start getting couples taking <laughs> uber to the soccer practice what the hell is everybody getting an uber here <laughs> and what i love about about people that live in your in your neck of the woods is you know you never know who somebody knows like another parent like you know as a payback in mid-season, you could have, like, uh, you know, one of these pro soccer players show up, uh, Messe, Lionel Messe. Oh, yeah, turns out Sal on our team, he's an agent. <laughs> Lionel Messe is going to warm you guys up before the game right now. You never know. It's, like, crazy. <clears throat> you know who you oh, got to bring God. in, man. Oh. Uh, Mrs. Watt. Oh, oh, we, we got a whole deal going, bro. The Watts are coming over Saturday. Oh, nice, man. For, for an overnight visit? 
No, he's in town all week for the Super Bowl. He's got like like activities around the Super Bowl, a Gatorade or whatever. All these right. you know sponsors and whatnot. Is he staying at Spielberg's house? <laughs> I don't know where he's. I don't know where he's <laughs> Anywhere else other than that is a tent compared to your house. I want to know where he's <laughs> where, where he's spending the night. <clears throat> he's co- he's coming with his wife, and his brother's coming with his girl, TJ. So oh, oh, oh the wow, four, awesome. The f- the four of them are coming over Saturday, right? Oh, that's now, great. That's so awesome. For lunch. So this is what I did for this. Now, I thought it I thought the party could use a couple other people there. Not that it's a party. I said, come on over for lunch. We're gonna have some burgers. So I brought this burger guy in who's phenomenal out here. He's got unbelievable burgers. And I invited two more couples, and they have kids that are mm, 14 and 10, let's say, right? Girls. And uh, this might be a little bit overkill. I brought in a bartender. (laughs) Now. I got another part. <laughs> I got another party at starting at four o'clock because my father's coming over with my sister's family and we're having like a pasta night. Nice. So I, I told Lana, I go get the bartender and have him stay from twelve to eight. He could work the lunch party and he could work the dinner party. So I got this guy locked in for eight hours. Now, well. My wife, and I, I need your take on this. My wife's like, oh, you know, should I get some, like, football games? Like, you know, throw the football through the through the, the circle. I go, listen, just because it's Super Bowl weekend and we got football players coming to the house, right. we, don't not, we don't need to set up a combine. You know what I'm saying? We, no, I we, mean. I, I, I this I, ain't I, the. <laughs> We're not going to be doing the 40 for time here. <laughs> it's about, oh, that's it. <laughs> that is so funny. Oh, so, gosh. And then then Watt will be like, hey, and then when you come visit us, we'll, uh, we'll all sit around and watch Kevin Hart win an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 yeah, it's like it's like Watt putting up a stage and speakers in his backyard and telling me you want to do some stand up. I got a stage, right? It's Super Bowl so, weekend, but they're not in it, so I doubt they like uh, you know. Well, this is my question: right. since football players are coming Come over by. to the house, so funny, yeah, yeah. <laughs> since football players are coming to the house, do you have to? Say, and 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 and. Uh, Watt's wife is a soccer player. Kalia. Kalia. Professional soccer player, soccer player guy. Soccer you got player. the girls coming over with your friends, kids. Do they play soccer? This is uh, wow. The other the the my friends' kids play soccer, right? I didn't even put the two to two and two together that they love soccer and then uh, the girls the girl TJ Watts uh, uh, I don't know her um her name, but she's also a professional soccer player. So I oh mean, my goodness, and I got unbelievable, listen. unbelievable the talent in your lunch, oh, bro. I got a soccer goal, like a goal yeah. that we bring out for the kids, and we bring it for out for every party, you know, every party because the kids play soccer, or whatever. Now, my question to you is: If I bring this thing out, the yeah. soccer net yeah, yeah. and the soccer balls, are the girls gonna go? Oh God! Now we gotta go kick it with the kid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's way different. Soccer is much more communal. Any age, kick the ball. It's uh, you know, becoming even more and more popular. Not at all. It's not. It's, I can't equate it. Okay. I mean, football is so specific. You know, it's like, uh, like you said, it turned it into a combine. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's oh that's fantastic, man. So the guests that you'll come having for lunch, they must be super excited to meet. Yeah, you know, so no, yeah, the, the, they're am- they're amped. Um, so we're gonna have that on Saturday. I gotta say, man, sun- just one interruption though. If you get a moment, because this is like kind of a dream when when you're in between parties. You know, when the first group leaves before, it would be so cool to walk up 
to a bartender alone in your own home, order a drink, and just sit there like like just it's almost like it sounds great to just have a bartender for eight hours with no party. Just be like, I'm me and Lana are gonna be by the pool all day. And I just want you up there. You know what I'm saying? Oh god, what a great idea. So cool. Oh. Like, yeah, like, hey Frank, before you give you that two hour break, just mix me a screwdriver, would you? And <laughs> Oh, that's awesome, man. Oh, my God. Double bro. party, man. Wow. Double party back to back. And then, uh, did I tell you I'm going to the Super Bowl? Did I tell you this? No, but uh, did you go to the race, too, by any chance that they had there? Because I thought you might go to that, that NASCAR race. No, 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 no NASCAR. No oh. NASCAR. We're going. My dad's in town. So my dad, Lana, and I are going to the Super Bowl Great. on Sunday. That's <laughs> your dad. This is so I'm so happy for him that he gets to do all this stuff. I mean, I saw you guys courtside at the a Grizzlies game. Where was that? Was that in LA? So, so no. We were my dad came out to Milwaukee. He drove out there. Uh and then from Milwaukee we went to Minnesota. And we got invited to the Minnesota Timberwolves game against the Detroit Pistons, and they put us on the court. Right so now, my father, yeah, father hasn't been to an NBA game since 1989 when we went to go see the Bulls, and we go now. This is a type of experience. A A Rod invited us to the game, gracious enough to part give owner us of the Grizzlies seat. now. Yeah. Okay. No. The, no? to Team. the wolf, Timberwolves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So we go and they're like, we're gonna have a a lunch for you guys if you guys want to order whatever you want, a buffet, whatever. So my dad isn't kind of used to this type of hospitality, right? So we sit down, I go, you know, get a you know, that is preset menu, it's like an appetizer salad and an entree. I said, "What do you What do you want?" He goes, uh, "Is it free?" <laughs> <laughs> that is unbelievable. Hey, hey, he goes, "It's free." I go, "Yeah, it's free." He goes, "I want everything <laughs> now." <laughs> this This is something that it's it's either cultural. Or it's upbringing. Now, and I got the same mentality when it comes to this stuff. Like, if you take me to something like this, and I know you're going to pay, I don't get everything. Because I just, I wouldn't do that to somebody, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. So you ask if it's free, and that, because he's like, he would have probably just got one thing if he knew I was paying because he never wants to like overindulge. But since it was free, he gets he gets everything, right? Now, most people, I don't want to say most, but some people that wouldn't even like register, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you know people like that would just go Regardless if it's free or you're paying, they would just get what they want. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, I was raised, and I still do this to this day. If someone's treating, I always get the cheapest entree. You know, and you know, if the one more is a dollar more, you can kind of slide into that territory too. But you know, yeah, I know what you're saying. It's just people coming hard, but I'll do the lobster and the da da da. <laughs> and yeah, it's right? <laughs> and it's. And I've been around it where the person who's paying can clearly afford it. That's beyond an issue. But be, but that doesn't mean you do that. You know what I mean? That That's what they see. No. I've been around that stuff. And they're like, wow. Mm. You know. Unless the host reiterates, get whatever you want. That's don't worry about it. You know, I, I still and, don't. And that, I, that's a double test. It's the double <laughs> test. And they go, you sure? All right, I will get the lobster. It's like Willy Wonka. And now you're not getting the factory. But, <laughs> but I'm going with the fucking chicken. I still might get the factory. I still go with the chicken. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I, I hear you. I hear you on that. Yeah. But I think it's an individual uh, basis that you have to go on in regards to who's hosting. So 
we get the we get the lunch and we go to the seats and I gotta tell you, man, I sat courtside once, but it was it was by the basket. This was right on the sideline. So literally, you got your feet, and then two feet in front of your feet, you got the guy taking the game winner, right? Like it's like so cool. It's I couldn't get over the size and the speed that these guys are playing at. Because I played high school freshman B basketball, right? Yeah, yeah. At the lowest level, at the high school level, you could play. <laughs> right. And I was, and I was still slow, right? <laughs> these guys, it's like they get the ball and they score, and like if you take a sip of drink, you you miss the play. It, yeah, it's that fast in front of you. I don't even, I don't even know how the hell they're maneuvering in that smallest space. It's ten guys in a very confined space. I'm surprised they didn't enlarge the court by now because right. when when basketball first started, yeah. the guys weren't seven foot, two hundred and ninety pounds, I, right? I agree, and and with that, raise the hoop. I mean. Some of these guys got to lower their jump because they bang their head. It's insane. The athleticism. Yeah. And what, and I watch college hoops. Um, and what's crazy is there's guys in college hoops that dominate. They're great. And they don't even make the NBA. That's how incredible these guys are. Like football, like NFL, same thing, you know. But uh, what an experience, Bro. man. That is oh, something I want to say about that. But I can't remember. That is so cool, though. Oh, yeah. By okay, the way, so, I just want to say. Good. If I was with Sadie and she was, you know, as successful in doing what you were doing, what I said doesn't apply. I would get the lobster if my kid was paying and she was doing well. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, because you had you had said depends on the relationship, and uh, yeah, yeah, I might get the lobster. How would you? <laughs> <laughs> so it is it is depending on who you're hanging with. I yeah hear you. yeah absolutely absolutely so. Here's the thing, and I, I want to get your take because you play college ball. Uh, Division three, guy. Well, I mean, I mean it's it well, <laughs> only 12 guys on the team. As a freshman, the coach literally said, to put this in perspective, we take 12 guys, but only nine guys get sneakers. That's all we have a budget for. <laughs> so <laughs> I said, if, if I'm one of the last three guys, I ain't playing if I got to buy my own sneakers. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I play college basketball. <laughs> so this is I don't know, I haven't watched an NBA game in years. And I don't know if this is something that you could speak to because you know, but this is what happens. Like at a commercial break or a timeout, right? Players go to the sidelines. All the coaches, including the head coach, come out to the free throw line and they have a discussion. Right? It's it's almost like a, a small coach's meeting. Oh yeah. And then from that meeting, the head coach goes back in and he talks to the players. Now, the basketball I'm used to watching is like Phil Jackson, right? At a timeout, gets up, the players start to walk towards the bench, and he's looking at them like you motherfucker. You sit down, right? <laughs> yeah. And then he pulls up he pulls up a chair. And he's doing X and O's on the dry erase board, right? He's pointing. <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with you. There's no more of that. There's like, it, it seems like it's a communal decision now with like the offensive coach, the defensive coach. I don't, I, I, I don't yeah. know in basketball how many coaches there are, but there's like five guys there, and I feel like with the environment that we're in today, like. Some coach 10 years ago rose, raised his hand and said, um, I would like to be part of like, you know, the, the, the meeting in, you know, at, ha at, at the timeout. Right. And now he's got to include everybody into the thing <laughs> because everybody feels like they're left out. Right. Yeah. Is this, is this, a, is this a new thing? Have, have you ever heard of this? I'm, I'm, but you're losing me a little. So w w the, he goes out at halftime to the court just to talk to the. Not, not halftime. I mean, not a, a timeout. Timeouts. He goes out to all the court. Five, they all come off the bench, the coaches. They go to the free throw line, that area. Uh huh. And the, the coaches have a, a, a meeting. So it's the same thing, but right? they don't so, do it next to the bench anymore. 
Well, I don't even remember them doing it. I, I thought what was happening when I was watching basketball in the 90s, Phil Jackson would be sitting at the bench and he'd go down to, uh, I think his name was Johnny Bach or uh, I forgot the offensive or defensive guru. He'd go, hey, you see what they're doing out there? And he'd go, yeah, what they need to do is bring over Pippen and then Pippen needs to drop off a cool coach and they would talk about it kind of like in the midst of the game and then they time out, they bring him in Phil Jackson sits him down. Now it's time out. Okay, coaches, let's get together. Let's go to the free throw line. Let's discuss what you saw. And then I'll go back and communicate to the team what we talked about at the free throw line. That is ridiculous. So I, I thought you meant the out. coach came out uh, and talked with the players. The players walk to the bench and the coaches go yeah. out to talk on the court. Yeah. What do they want, their moment yeah. in the, on the court? I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Is I, this something <clears throat> that you've seen at the collegiate level no. uh, playing? I, I, think, this okay. is, I think on some level, I think it might be a charade. Let me tell you why. Because today's star in the NBA after Michael Jordan, that was a right around the last true guy star who listened to the coach. Now, ever since <laughs> the star is looking at the coach going like this and that drawer, and all he's seeing is, where did you play? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> who are you, guy? You know, why am I listening? You know? So I think somewhere, and I don't want to name names, but some of these big stars said, we're not listening to you anymore. So the coaches said, well, I'm not going to sit next to them looking like a fool because they're not listening to me. I'll, let's pretend we're talking shit out at the free throw line. <laughs> then we'll come over and we'll find out what they plan on doing. And then uh, we'll go back. It's, you don't need a head coach now. You need a psychiatrist more than anything. You, I don't even need you just need someone that talks to them. Yeah. Like, you know, what, what do you, at a timeout, what are you telling LeBron? What are you telling him? You know, if you say to him, you're not going to take this last shot, okay? This is what we're going to, he, he's going to go, I am. So, oh, okay. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, yeah, I, I hear you, man. It, it, they probably have no authority or very minimal they don't, authority over these guys. They don't even come out now. Like the, the, the coach will go, come out, and the, the star goes, nah. And he goes, okay, yeah, you stay. And then he turns to <laughs> then he turns to the scrub and tells him to go sit back. The scrub, the other guy in the NBA. He tells him to go sit back down, you know? It's like, it's crazy, man. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what do you what do you, what do you got over there? What's going on? Give me, give me I've been talking to your off. Hey, that's all right. My wife's been painting, but I think she's out of room now. <laughs> uh, no, nah, listen, man. I just but I, I nothing big, but I wanted to um we got a couple little things here, but all right, some of you guys have been asking about the cast t-shirts. They're back up and running. You go to PeteCorielli.com, and it's right there. You can see how to how to get a cash shirt. We got all sorts of sizes now, too. We got it covered. Also, still some seats available for the March 12th show at the Power Mount on Long Island. Um, also got other shows. If you go to my website, you can see all the dates. So back to the cast. I want to say I was talking to a guy. His name is Sam. It was after my shows this past weekend, Mohegan Sun. Young, good-looking dude, like, I don't know, maybe late 20s, looks, looks like Bradley Cooper. So he introduced himself after the show, says, I'm the guy who left Jimmy from Boston the Patriot tickets and Lou the carton of cigarettes. And uh, we're chatting for a sec. And he goes, you know, I don't even remember me telling you about Afghanistan. You were meeting people who didn't have time to talk. And I'm like, weren't you he, over there? He was, he, he was over there and left just before the fall of it all. But he was in charge of a bunch of guys over there, and they would listen to the cast every day in Afghanistan in their thing where they lived, in their bunker or whatever it was, man. You know? What? And, uh, and he said, uh, I had some <laughs> um, really cool black guys from Jersey that um, uh, worked, on, uh, worked with me, you know, my brothers, man. And he goes, you know, normally... They don't know you guys, you know, and they would always say about Jimmy from Boston, who's that loud motherfucker starting to show off all the time? <laughs> <laughs> but so it's really cool. But he told me this. I can't say much, but we talked. I bought him a couple of beers afterwards and we talked. I was telling me these unbelievable stories. But the only one I know I can share is uh, I thought you get a kick out of this. He was saying 
<clears throat> when you're over there, you have interpreters for you that the government supplies really smart, like fluent guys that could speak Afghani. And he goes, but sometimes you get local people for the loosey goosey stuff. You know, he goes like I had a 19 year old uh, guy, Mamu. Uh, and he was my guy, he was my interpreter. And he goes, but sometimes the local guys, they're not professional interpreters, you know, so they're not always that great, you know? So he goes like one time we'd be, we were in a house. That's what they did. They go into these homes, you know, and he goes, the Afghan people were so cool. He goes, just very normal lives like us, not much different. And he goes, but like, I'm in one of these Afghani houses and I'm, I'm telling them they need some assistance. And I'm going, I'm telling them, you know, we could bring you fuel. We can bring you batteries. We can bring you chicken, food, cereal. And he goes, I'm, I'm rattling off Pete. I'm on like 10 things. And I look over, I go, Mamu, nothing? I'm up to 10 items. <laughs> and <you're> so <laughs> he goes, he's just sitting there listening to my grocery list. I mean, <laughs> I, this is what you're supposed to tell them. <laughs> But he goes, Mom, nothing? Oh, I was dying. So God bless those guys, well, man. Freaking awesome. Well, this, this is my question. And if you got this guy's email or, or you got any way to get in a hold of this guy, yeah, yeah. if you could just throw him a, a question here. When they go in and offer this stuff, right? Prior to going in, does their uh, commander go, listen, guys, uh, for this one... Don't offer the chicken and don't offer the fuel. All right? <laughs> you guys Just, are going in. You're rattling off too many things too soon. Offer six, <laughs> half a dozen eggs and zip it. <laughs> right? <laughs> I want to know if they got the authority. If the, guy list, if the guy listens to the grocery list and he goes, eh, you know what? You got a, you got an iPhone you could give me. Now, does the does the guy gotta go? Listen, the guy wants an iPhone. Can we do that? Yeah, we got the iPhone contract with Apple. We'll send him an iPhone. I just want to know what's in the grocery basket well, that they can offer. Yeah, is it is it like collecting? Uh, Marlboro Miles, the more, like, you want an iPhone? Well, then you have to give us a hideout. You get an iPhone for a hideout, <laughs> right? Chicken, chicken, you have to give us only a name. Only a name and we'll give you some chicken. But for, uh, you know, it depends on what you want. You want to live in America? You need to show us where the leader is. Where's the leader? <laughs> no, but... <laughs> You want to live in America? You think that's even an option? Listen, I take you, take you and your whole family to Miami and relocate. I just need to know where the leader of Hezbollah is. Yeah, yeah, but you know, man, God bless those people over there from Afghanistan that were helping us out. It's, uh, I don't want to get political, obviously, but the last thing I want to say about it is, uh, he goes, check out this photo. And he shows me this really cool photo of four of his guys. It's All it is is their silhouette, and the sun's coming down in Afghanistan. They're kind of up a little bit on, like, a hillside. And he goes, this is really bad. It's like rule number one, you know, um, from, snipe, from snipers, it's called silhouetting. And you never want to stand up in a situation like that and make yourself a clear target like a silhouette, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, so, and he goes... So I yelled at my guys, to, you know, he goes, but it was such a beautiful shot. I had to get the shot first. So I got the shot. And then I'm like, get the fuck off the mountain. You're going to get killed up there. Come on, guy. You know, he goes, but I had to get the Jesus. shot. It was stunning. Yeah. <laughs> he loves the kids. So, He's a great guy. It was a really nice chat, man. Okay. Another question yeah. on this. Um, so shit, where did I, where did I go? Silhouetting. Oh my God! Where the hell was I going with? Oh, the stories that he told you, yeah, that are not for public consumption, yeah, right, yeah. Does he tell you, Pete? Just so you know, you can't tell this one on the cast. Is that how he? Is that how he prefaces it? Or did you hear the story and go, Yeah, no, nah, I can't. That no, I can't he, say that. I said, uh, don't worry, I won't say he's on the cast. And he's like, yeah, no, that wouldn't, I, I, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> oh, Bro, what man. he told me, <laughs> I could probably be the lead guest on Tucker Carlson tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <coughs> 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 
Oh, shit. <laughs> so, oh, lastly, my bro, God. I know you got to go to your dentist appointment. On a lighter note, uh, the other day, I, as I told you, I got the dryer from Home Depot. I got some other stuff from Home Depot. Bro, the other day, I get an email from Home Depot saying, Total Home Depot, the orange, the whole thing. I won. I, I, I've bought so much stuff that I got a prize, right? So I go through, and they're showing me the prizes. Uh, and it's like good stuff. It's an Apple iPhone. It's uh, uh, headphones. It's uh, tools. And the and only thing you have to pay for is shipping. So the more the item is, the more shipping costs, right? So then all I wanted was a router for this show to have another wireless router. They're only charging me shipping, $3.95. And then I even look at the comments, and there are people going, I didn't think this was real, but it actually is, and I got my thing. It's so great. You know, Karen from here, um, and then the other one's saying this. So I click it, right? I do it, and then they want my credit card for the three ninety five. Bro, about a week later, Jackie's like, what's this? I go, oh, that's my router. Fucking $20.95. So they jacked me another seventeen fifty for the thing. So I, I, I try to call up the thing to say, you said it was only going to be three ninety five. I know it's not a lot more money, but it's the principle that you told me it was, three, you know? And I just get a recording, and there's no one there, and Jackie's, like, telling me that that's not real, and that I'm an idiot, and why do I keep doing that stuff? And I'm like, this was totally real. It's a scam. Well, where is our FBI? Where? What if I was eighty-five wait, wait. years old and I and I got a lot of shit? Yeah, this is how they're they're prying, bro. Cancel the credit card. Did you cancel it? Oh my god, I didn't. But get this: when I went to go to Mohegan Sun, I have two cards, an Amex and a Visa, and I left my Amex at home. Uh, so I'm driving, and all of a sudden I get a text saying someone tried to use my Visa. So oh, there's Jackie. On. I lost you again. Can you hear me? What the fuck? Awesome. Again with this shit? Oh, uh, I got it. Okay, go ahead. I, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Wait. So, yeah, go ahead. So I said to Jackie, did you get some at Dada Dot Club? And she's like, no. And the text said, this is Ch Ch your bank, Chase Bank. If this is you, not you, hit that it's not you, and we'll send you a new card. I couldn't do that, though, because I was going to Mohegan Sun, and I needed my card for travel. So I ignored it. So, someone might be. I gotta get off oh. the show. I gotta cancel that card, bro. I'm not responsible for any of it. I know, but like, this is like Internet 101, bro. How could this. I, it looks so real, though. How come no one's yeah. getting arrested for this shit? This is like, uh. It's. it's we don't have. We, they don't have the manpower, bro. You're not getting arrested if you. If you take shit out of Nordstrom. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Talk about putting it in perspective. Yeah, but so like, so Home Depot could never do a legitimate nice thing for their customers because we're all, anything coming through is always bullshit then, right? If... Every anything offer me free shit, delete. That's it. That's it. When you That's go it. on your computer, just remember rule number one: there's nothing in this world for free. Enjoy That's your it. time if you, surfing. If, if you learn anything from this podcast, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> Peter. As soon as you, you, if you learn anything, yeah. anything that comes through the email or a phone call, hey, I got this, I got that for you. Hang it up, delete it, and what you should do right now is hang up the, from the podcast, and you get on the phone with your bank and said, shut it down. It's over. All right. I Cancel am. it. Reissue a new card. All My right. God. No more games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, bro. All right, Great man. Hanging, Good man. hanging. We'll talk to you uh, next week. I got to talk to you about um, uh, off air about uh, what we're going to do next week. All right, man. Sounds great. Good hang. All right, man. Later. Take <laughs> Bye. <laughs>